And so, after 960 simulations of buying and selling the XE Infinity token, after 960 backtests, the best way to buy low and sell high is the following. Hi, in this video, we're going to discuss how we can time the market for Axie Infinity. So how can we take advantage of this volatility to potentially buy low and sell high, right? Is there a systematic approach that we can backtest where we can use statistics in order to outperform the market and make more money than just buying and holding. Now what's important around Axie Infinity is that if you hold the token, you don't just get the price return, right? One of the main reasons people get into the investment is because of the staking rewards, 73% APR. And so the hope is if you're in it for the long term, that you can actually digest this up and down and in the end come out as a winner. Now for this video though, we want to look at shorter time frames. For the longer time frame discussions, there's a separate video on this. So that will be at the outro of this video. Over here we are going to look at optimizing the short term. Because Look at the differences, right? When we look at the long term, we are mainly going in trends, right? We either have positive momentum or negative momentum. There isn't too much volatility happening. But once we zoom in here, right? Once we don't look at daily ticks, but at hourly ticks, this does look quite different. Sometimes the price is low, sometimes it is high. It is fluctuating much more and we can potentially take advantage of those fluctuations using mathematics using statistical analysis. And so how can we measure this up and down? How can we see if we are currently comparatively high or low? Tradingview.com has a quite nice indicator for that. It's one of my favorite indicators. It's the relative strength index, a very common technical indicator. It's this purple line over here. Let's remove the moving average from this RSI, let's make this a little bit cleaner over here. And let's also make this a bit more visible. So maybe color coded here in red. So this is the RSI. It ranges between zero and 100. Now I'm not going to discuss the calculation of the RSI itself. We're simply interested in determining potential low points. So the idea is when the hourly RSI, so the relative strength index on an hourly chart, when it is comparatively low, maybe we also have relatively low prices for the token. So maybe we can time those bottoms by having some kind of a threshold. So let's maybe set 25 over here. This would be our threshold and we could buy whenever this value is very, very low. The question then is, when are you going to sell, right? We could wait for a higher value on the hourly RSI, but sometimes that higher value simply doesn't come, right? For example, here we got a low RSI value, but we didn't shoot up to say 60 or 70 afterwards. So you wouldn't really find our exit point. So one way to make our lives easier is to simply buy here and then sell just a fixed amount of hours afterwards. So I want to determine two things over here. We want to find out what is our ideal threshold here? Where should we exactly do our purchase? And then once we did it, how long should we on average hold in order to make a profit? So let's say we would have bought over here. In this specific scenario, 20 hours would have worked quite well. Now, why would this strategy work in the first place? The idea is when the price is crashing and the hourly RSI gets low, that there's potentially quite a bit of fear in the market, right? Maybe even forced liquidations from leveraged traders, maybe some stop losses get triggered. So some kind of automated selling happening that depresses the price in the short term and then over the next few hours, we might come back to an equilibrium again and we might make money from that approach. The basic idea of buying when other people are fearful. So I hope the strategy is clear. Let's now dive into the results. What's the best RSI threshold and what's the ideal holding period? I have prepared 960 backtests for this video. And in front of you, you see 48 of those backtests or the result of 48 of those backtests. You see a chart that shows the 30 RSI threshold. So we are setting our threshold over here to 30 
and then we decide to buy whenever the RSI is below a certain value. Now what you see on the x-axis over here is the holding period after such a signal in hours. So that can be one hour all the way to two days. On the y-axis you see the average return using that strategy. Now what about the case that we want to maybe get these four and a half percent right by holding 42 hours after the signal. But what about the situation where we might get another signal earlier than that? So let's say we get a buying signal over here, another one over here, then one here, and all of this happens within 24 hours. Are we buying every single hour when this happens? The answer is no. So the backtest freezes the capital basically with the very first buying signal. So we would have bought over here in this example and then we simply hold for 42 hours and we completely ignore these kind of signals that came afterwards. And when you do this, you average out the performance of every single trade, this is what you get. So let's now look at what kind of a threshold should we take. I've backtested everything from 30 all the way down to 10. Now, the lower we go here, the less signals we potentially get, right? When we look at this, when we are very low on this, we might only get one signal or two, three signals. When we are very high, we would potentially buy way more often. So by going down with the RSI threshold, we're becoming more and more picky with our trades. So the next chart here will show the 29 RSI threshold. And when we compare this, we can see there's not a big difference, but the 29 RSI is slightly outperforming here at the end, the 30 RSI. So the maximum return here is at 4.75% roughly on average for every single trade. Now with 28, we have a bit of a fluctuation with the 27 RSI, we are almost reaching 5% per trade by holding 40 hours after the signal. Now this is an effect I've seen for many different cryptocurrencies. So these kind of charts, they look very similar. What is specific to Xe Infinity though is there is a gap here and this will now be interesting. This is the 26 hours I threshold. So look at how much worse the performance gets going from 27 to 26. This should not be the case. This is very specific to Xe Infinity and it doesn't get much better afterwards, at least for a while. So let's go lower with our RSI, our returns after the signal are not that impressive. Most of it is still above the zero line, but one might almost argue that this is just random fluctuation. It's not significantly above the zero line. This continues with the 23 RSI and the 22. The 21 even underperforms. So does the 20 threshold. But with the 18 threshold, we suddenly get our positive performance back again, which then continues to increase the further we lower the RSI threshold, the pickier we are with our signals. Now note that the lower we go here, the less trading signals we get. 10 RSI is really, really low. So over the entire data set, I've backtested everything since the beginning of 2021. Over the entire data set, the 10 RSI threshold has only been hit three times. So you probably don't want to use this, right? This kind of a trade doesn't offer itself too often. But the 18 RSI, I think, is very, very encouraging. And so really we are now left with two different thresholds that are of interest, the 27 RSI and the 18 RSI. This here, the 27 generates way more trades, the 18 RSI generates less trades. But if you're asking me, I personally prefer the 18 RSI because the result here is also very much in line with other cryptocurrencies. The holding period of a bit over one day, we can also see this for example when trading Avalanche or Phantom, it's always a little bit over one day that's ideal. And the return per trade with around 8% also seems to be pretty much in line with many other altcoins. The second problem I have with the 27 hours I threshold is actually the success rate. So how often do these trades actually work? So when we look at this, the success rate, so on the y-axis over here, we don't have now the average return. We now simply see how often does the trade work. When we look at this data point over here, right, the 40 hour holding period, we can see that our success rate is even less than 50%. So the reason why this outperforms here so well is not 
because it works so often, so almost a coin flip if it works or not. The reason why we get this outperformance is because the winning trades on average return more than the losing trades. That's different though for the 18 RSI threshold. So if we lower this to 18, okay, if we only buy whenever the hourly RSI is below 18, which does not happen too often, right? It happened over here, it happened over here, then here in December again, in November. This happens maybe once a month or so, sometimes several times per month, but then there are some months where we don't have any signals. So it doesn't happen all the time, but when it does and we buy and we hold for 27 hours, then historically at least, we would have made a profit in 75% of the cases. Note, this simulation does not include any trading fees, right? No gas fees, no slippage, no bid ask spread, nothing like this. Simply just price differences from one hour to the next. So in the end, your real return is probably not going to be above 8%, it's probably going to be slightly below that when executing this. Now, of course, past behavior doesn't necessarily indicate that the market will react exactly the same thing in the future. But I personally like to have something that's backed by data. I don't think human psychology changes too much when there is fear. It does seem to make sense to buy during those specific periods. But the problem, of course, is you need to be there in this specific hour. And who can really monitor this chart all the time? You could look at the premium membership, at the Bitcoin strategy premium membership. We've got a Telegram channel that always sends automated messages whenever something interesting happens. And as you can see, for example, here for Phantom, the best hourly RSI threshold is 26. And you should then sell 26 hours from that signal. So there's currently around 20 cryptocurrencies for that strategy integrated with this channel. There are also other strategies here, for example, when moving averages cross. So we have been bullish on Cardano already since March 23rd. So that's one of many benefits, right? You also get various tutorials, various video tutorials on how to build such a backtest, or you can even download those Excel sheets by yourself. These kind of simulations are simply built in Microsoft Excel, so you don't need any fancy software for that. Of course, you could also simply just ask me here in the premium chat to backtest your specific altcoin. I'm happy to do that. I do a backtest almost every single day for the premium members. So that's the current subscription. You can either sign up monthly. It is currently a bit cheaper because crypto isn't too bullish. You could also alternatively decide to pay yearly where you do get two months for free. Don't forget to subscribe because I publish videos regularly. And if you're wondering if it makes sense to hold Xe Infinity over the long term, to buy and hold and stake it, there is a separate analysis with very interesting results here in this video. So don't miss that if you're a long-term bull on Xe Infinity, that's what you want to watch. See you in that video and thanks for watching this one. Bye-bye.